Hi folks, Dave with DBS Tech Talk. And today we're going to look at a headphone that was sent in by a reviewer and a subscriber. So I greatly appreciate that. And uh, this headphone, I've had some limited experience with um, prior to receiving them for review. And it wasn't a headphone that I was a big fan of. <laughs> we'll put it that way. The headphone is the Grotto SR325. The um, initial impressions that I had were stemming from a very, very short um, stint with them on occasions, uh, on random occasions. And the first you know, impression was they're uncomfortable and they're bright and they have a lot of trouble. And, uh, but the only nice thing about them was the mids. And, and that's all I really remembered. And so when they got sent for a review, I was skeptical. But over the last couple of weeks of listening to these day in, day out, for hours on end with all kinds of music, My impressions, did they change? All right, let's uh, let's start with a couple things. N number one, these are older, so they are used, so they do show some wear and tear. Um, they're not in horrid shape, which is good, but they, they do have a couple of little minor things that uh, probably wouldn't be the case if they were brand new. But you get the, the standard old Grotto leather headband. Um, hardly any padding on it at all. You get the little rod or stake for the slider. Um, just kind of goes up and down. It feels sturdy. I mean, it's not going to go anywhere, but it's very retro looking. The cups are metal. The yoke feels like metal. I think it is. I think everything on this is metal except for the little uh, connector piece. The pads on here have been replaced by the owner. Uh, these are not the stock pads. Thank goodness because those stock pads were not pleasant at all. Um, not sure exactly what pad he has on here, but I know that they aren't the standard pad from Grotto. So uh, bear that in mind. I think they're like from Ear Monk or something, something like that. Um, so I can't give you the 100% review of pure stock. But from what I remember from earlier um, in my couple years ago, touching and holding them, comfort is way better with these pads. The cable is um, vacuum cord thick. I mean, this is ridiculously thick cables. I thought some of my other headphones from like Hi-Fi Min and Elex from Focal um, had thick cables. <laughs> no, this is ridiculous. And it goes into a huge quarter inch with a big, huge... Um, strain relief on it it's not a cable that actually straightens out but you could whip somebody uh, with this i mean this is thick stuff and then it goes into a yoke um or i mean I'm, I'm sorry a split and it's a hard plastic has the grotto logos on it which is nice but then it goes into the splits and the cables are half as thick as the regular cord and uh cable is i and they're they just twist up, and this is where kind of some of the the age has come through. It's kind of thinning out um, a little bit there on the split, and it kind of twists on itself just a little bit. But, I mean, it's not terrible. But the thing that's really annoying is they're not detachable. So, it's just... Clunky retro reminds me of something that my granddad would have um, back when I was younger. 
uh, growing up in the in the seventies and the eighties. Um, maybe something that would have been used during one of the wars by a radio technician. Uh, it's very retro. It's cool looking, but. They're different. We'll just put it that way. Build quality. I mean, they're solid. They're, they're going to last last time. I mean, they're not going to fall apart. Just, I mean, they're not going anywhere. You put them on your head. Um, and with these pads, they're comfortable. I mean, they're lighter than light. And they just sit there. Now, with, because these are a little bit older, over time, the sliders do move a little bit. Uh, so you have to readjust just a little bit. It's not super bad. The clamp force has been stretched out on these. I remember when they were newer, the clamp force was a lot tighter. So you do have to work it a little bit um, to loosen it up. But other than that, comfort is not bad. You can sit with these for hours. They're open. And when I say they're open, I mean they're open. There is no isolation. Um, I put these on and all the sounds I hear around the house with the, the furnace is running at the moment. I can still hear it. Didn't even muffle it. Uh, my computer is doing something over there on the side of the room. It's thinking, downloading something or, or doing something weird. And I can hear that. Um, I mean, it's just... <laughs> you, you think that the Monoprice M1060 is open or... Um, the Hi-Fi Men 4XX is open. The Focal Elex is open. Those all have some sort of little bit of isolation added in. There's a little bit of a muffle in there. It, it, there's, it might take 10, 15% away from being fully open. You put these on at zero. I mean, it's, <laughs> these are the most open I've ever heard. Plain, plain and simple. If you're going to use these in public, you will not hear what you're playing. You will only hear the people around you unless you turn the volume completely up. I mean, it's just ridiculous how uh, open these are. And you're going to annoy everybody around you. Um, listen with these. Doesn't matter. All right. So. I'm OK with the build quality. I'm OK with the look of them. It's not really for me. But it's all right. It's all right. Some overall thoughts on them. They have tonal balance. Um, they're transparent. They are expressive. They're precise. And they're clear. They have, they're fast and agile. Exciting and immediate. Those are all adjectives that you can use to describe the Grotto SR325. They're very easy to drive. Uh, you can drive them off of a phone if you have an adapter because it comes with a quarter. Now, some of, some of the models did come with a 3.5, but this one came with the quarter inch, so you would need an adapter from Grotto, which is a quarter to a 3.5. Clunky, just as thick in, uh, as the vacuum cable, so just be prepared for that. You will need an adapter of some sort, but phones can drive them very easily um, and they scale well with amps. Let's get to the actual sound of them. Um, bass, uh, <laughs> there really isn't any as far as uh, impactful or um, deep. These are not base heads at all. I know I say that in almost every review. These are the least impactful base headphones. Um, does not mean that they don't sound good. They have nice tone, very nice texture to the base, and they're detailed. They don't extend out super far or super deep, but they have very good detail and very good... Um, tone to the bass is just there and present. It takes a back seat to everything else. Um, but it's present enough that you're not 
only hearing the Miz and the Treble, but it's not impactful and emphatic and. Uh, but it's pleasant sounding. The um, mids do not bleed from the base or do not bleed into the treble either. Um, there is good separation there and uh, they're, they're neutral sounding, but they do have a slight little bit warm um, tint to them. They are beautiful, smooth, and just textured amazingly. Uh, if you're a vocal um, and mids lover, these will sound awesome for you. And um, it's just buttery, romantic, and um, some of the best mids I've heard, including the Sennheiser HD 700s. They're not recessed, though. They are um, they're a little forward and uh, just amazing. I love the mids on the Grotto so SR325. Treble. You know, you hear it. Oh, man, they're bright. Oh, this is woo, way too high up. Squelchy, squeechy, um, sibilant, you name it. Yeah, I, I thought that at first uh, when I first heard them. But now that I've had time to sit down with them and really hear them on various amps and on various different styles of music, I actually like these better than the HD 700s. The HD 700s seem to be a little too bright, a little too detailed, a little too, oh, here is your treble. Whereas these have the detail, are extended very well, but they have a slight smoothness to them. Um, even though it gets way up there and it gives all kinds of detail and clarity, it's not forcing it down your, your throat. Uh, like for me, like the Sennheiser HD 700, it, it plays more coherently um, with the with the overall sound, minus the bass, of course. I'm not saying these are better than the HD seven hundreds. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> the totally different class of headphone. But as far as just the the way it presents it, these are more pleasant to my ears. I don't find that the um, the treble is too forward, but of course I do like treble. I'm not treble sensitive. So um, it may differ for you a little bit. If you, they, they are a bright headphone and they give a ton of detail. So if you're sensitive to that, these probably aren't for you or you will have to EQ it, which I'm not a fan of. But it's not as bad as I initially thought. Soundstage, massive. Um, it's not the clearest, and it's not the most um, clean. There is some graininess as you get farther out, but it doesn't blow out the, the sound to make everything else sound thin. These do have an, a kind of an intimate sound with the mids and with that treble detail it brings it in and makes them sound a little wider. So I, it's kind of a unique sound, but it doesn't get, so, sometimes when you have really wide sound stage, it sounds like you have speakers way out here. Whereas these don't give you that, that they don't have as much of the airiness and the, the blank spaces between it's, um, they actually do a really well job, good job of filling in the space and giving you the detail. Um, they are a right, center, left. There's not really a, a smooth transition. You can accurately and precisely tell where it's coming from, but it's more, okay, that's on the right side. Okay, that's straight ahead. Okay, and that's on the left. It's not a, oh, that's kind of mid, right, center. It's not like that. And it doesn't have a lot of height and, and uh, depth to it. There's not a whole lot of layering, but they are 
very well separated and clear. So, my opinions changed from the initial hearing of the Grotto SR325. And now I can appreciate what they do. And I actually do not mind listening to them. They sound good for um, rock and roll. They sound good for, in, for acoustical, classical music, and anything that has strings, guitars, um, piano, things like that in them. If you get songs or, or genres that have more treble, um, or a lot of drum work, a lot of cymbals, you'll be disappointed. They may get sibilant. They may get a little harsh. Um, bad recordings, these are not their friend. <laughs> How do they pair with my amps? Um, the AUN X7S, they sounded okay, but it was a little too... Um, made them a little, a little sharp. And it wasn't a real good pairing for me. The Audio GD NFB uh, 12.1 sounded well. You had to keep it on low gain or else you got some um, sharpness and harshness to it. It has a lot of power. The um, Cavelli Tube Hybrid sounded amazing. Toned down the, the treble just enough and gave a little warmth and added a little extra to the bass. So I really like the CTH on here. The um, APPJ PA1502A was not a good match. It overpowered it. It was too powerful for it. And there was a lot of distortion and, and things like that. Um, if you kept the volume way down, you, you barely had to turn the volume knob. But if you could get the right song on it, it sounded okay. It added a nice warmth to it, but it was just too hit or miss uh, <clears throat> in that case. The Gashelli Arkle Pro sounds great on it. Uh, you can run it straight out of your phone into the Arkle Pro, and it has just a um, nice tone from the Arkle Pro, and uh, it just... Mm a very nice match it doesn't overpower the headphones at all and it just has a tone that sounds natural and uh, clear and it really really matches up well with the the grotto sr325 and also on the uh more lesser quality songs the arco pro kind of smoothed that out for these a little bit so if you have a chance to get a Gashelli Labs Arkle Pro um, amp and you have the SR325s, beautiful match in my opinion. And uh, the only headphone that I have that is an open dynamic is the Focal Elex. And that's not a fair competition because they're completely worlds apart. And um, so I'm not even going to try to compare those. The other headphone that the user provided me was the Sennheiser HD 700. And again, different class of headphone, um, not really a fair fight other than in the treble. Um, the HD 700 has more detail, more clarity, more um, overall better treble. But the way it presents it is very forceful and very aggressive. Whereas on the SR325, it has the detail and clarity, not to the level of the HD700, but it presents it in a more smooth way. The HD700 is very analytical, and the uh, SR325 seems to be a little bit more on the enjoyment side. So I find, in conclusion, that the Grotto SR325 has, is expressive and it is exciting and it it's just a fun headphone to have for those moments of when you just want to sit back and enjoy your music you don't want to be extremely critical but you want to hear detail this has been dave with dbs tech talk thank you for watching and i'll catch you on the next video